Balance BBG chapter 22, sentence 7. <clears throat> he gives you the first word often, of course. Uh, and then if you look here, uh, if we're kind of pulling apart the rest of the sentence, recognize he's got um, prepositional phrase here, prepositional phrase here. And both of those prepositional phrases are fronted with chi. You know, in a scenario like that where you have two prepositional phrases, both fronted with chi, you, there is a kind of situation where you really ought to tell yourself that it is um, one of those places where it's, it's both and. It's not and, da, 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 and, it's both and. All right? And again, what would help you there is simply you've got, you know, prepositional phrase uh, with chi right before each uh, prepositional phrase. So it's, it's you know, again, a, a place where you would want to translate it as both and. So uh, often, both, in, fire, you know, him, okay, that kind of thing. You, you know, if you're going that way, that's going to be tough. But let's start with the, with the verb, and then we can put all those other things around, all right? And especially knowing that you're dealing with prepositional phrases, um, you're probably going to want to pull pretty much everything to the end. The other piece you ought to see is you don't really have anything that's obviously a subject in here. So what you're going to do is you're going to recognize that you're going to toss that into, uh, you know, it's going to be built into the verb because there's nothing that, that qualifies a, as an obvious subject. So next thing you ought to see is you're looking at an augment. You're looking at an epsilon nu. Epsilon nu, the only option is that third singular slot, right? in the top right quadrant of your uh, verb paradigm uh, sheet that uh, you should have there with you. So um, seeing the epsilon nu, third singular, you, you got to have that. You see the augment, and then you say, well, okay, wait a minute. Is this uh, an imperfect or is this an aorist? Is it an imperfect or is it an aorist? Well, uh, hopefully you, you, you know, the form you memorized when you memorized the present was balo with a double lambda. So when you see just that single lambda, you should recognize that right away as a stem change. So, you know, whatever else you know, you should see that as a stem change because you memorize balo as having two lambdas. So once you know that it is not the present stem, it is not imperfect. If it is not the present stem with an augment, it is not the imperfect. Therefore, this, you know, as a stem change, is going to be the aorist. All right? So, uh, he threw, right? Uh, he threw who? He threw him. And you see, that's a pretty obvious direct object as, uh, uh, you know, uh, uh, with a the new there at the end that tells you this uh, accusative and, and obviously a direct object. So he threw him both in fire and in water, right? Um, and technically waters, hopefully you see that as well. But technically, I mean, we would say water, but uh, technically this is a plural. So, um, you know, recognize that that's ace hudata is a, is a uh, neuter plural from hudor, and it is um, going to be accusative because it's the object of the preposition. All right, so keep that in mind. But uh, it's like often he threw him both in, and we would probably say in the fire and in the water. Uh, we would probably make both of those definite in English, just uh, in terms of the way we would say it. So you're, you're certainly not wrong to um, add the article in in both of those places. Um, so again, uh, often he, he threw him both in the fire and in the water. 